Can you take us back to that day of your accident in 2013? What went through your mind when you realized the severity of the situation? And when did you realize it was getting serious? Um, I realized when after I popped up of the wave that I fell on, mm -hmm. I saw the wave behind marching towards me. And I didn't see my partner anywhere close to me. And I felt really alone. And when I saw the size of that wave, I realized, okay, this is an experience I have never experienced before. This is going to be different. And this is probably going to take me to the limit or to death. I'm not sure. Mm. And I got pretty, pretty nervous. Um, it was a pretty stressful moment to make those realizations. Um, the wave actually eventually hit me. Um at the time, we didn't have the same equipment we have today. So we didn't have um, flotation jackets, the jackets that have O2 cartridges. And we um, can use them and it fills up with air and you come up much quicker. We only have, nor we, we at that time, we only had kind of normal impact, a little bit wind life jackets. Mm. And I got hit really hard on that wave. And I was under for a long, long, long time. And I had what? I think most people experienced before, you know, dying. I had a lot of thoughts about my life. I had uh, family and loved ones intrude my head. I was sad. I was sad that I was going through that, that I was maybe going to die. And then after those thoughts, I had to let go because there was a job to be done. I needed to kind of tap into my survival mode and work with the tools I had, which I had a lot to be able to go through that experience, right? I was a, a good diver at that point, a good free diver. I was I was pretty experienced on holding my breath and being out of oxygen and all the sensations that came with it. And um, once I let go and I accepted that I had put myself in that shit show, uh, I I started you know kind of really acting with the tools I had. Um, the second wave at that point, the third wave came and I was about to break the surface and it actually imploded on me and I wasn't even able to catch a breath. And that's when my life jacket even came out of me. So wow. I blacked out underwater and, and had a little like episode underwater. And, and that was when, you know, I released everything. And when I got back up to the surface, it was all instinct. I had no control over it. I was, I was acting upon the tools and the experience I've had guard, gathered throughout my life, but I wasn't really there anymore. Right. Um, what did you physically feel when you finally came up and took your first breath? Um, I had a lot of dizziness. So like you start seeing a lot of stars when you're going hypoxic. Okay. I had a noise in my ears that went like, Ugh. it yeah. was like having like a siren. Ooh, wow. um, I had my throat was closing. So at the same time I was, um, up and with my mouth, you know, outside the, the water, but I couldn't really catch a breath because it had prevented me of drowning underwater. So it was kind of like the, it was closing and, and didn't want to open again because it didn't switch to the idea that I wasn't underwater anymore, blacked out. Because that's right. a mechanism your body does to save you when you black out underwater. So it was hard because I kept in the process of, of being depleted of oxygen. Mm. And, and the very last thing that happened was I was not there anymore. And um, my partner at the time just kind of yelled at me, grab the rope, because I was obviously drifting towards a place that was very dangerous was the cliffs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the last the last um, vital sign that we lose is hearing before we die. And that I only did. I don't know what strength I did that, but I did held on the rope and that was the last thing I had in me. I, yeah, hearing was the last thing I, I lost before going black. Wow. Oh, it just gives me chills to hear that whole story. So how long do you think you were holding your breath and underwater in, in total? I think the whole episode was like up to 10 minutes. Wow. Um, from the first wave that I fell on to getting myself to the shore and being dragged and resuscitated was around 10 minutes. Um. Who, I mean, again, people haven't watched this yet, so I'm I'm having you narrate this a little bit, but who was there with you? Who was on the beach? Who was there in the water with you? Can you explain a little bit about people around watching this? 
Yeah, I had my partner at the time. He was kind of a mentor of mine at that stage in my life. He was 20 years older. He had himself a world record. His name is Carlos Bulli. And he was unexperienced, let's say, to work through that episode with me. We were both inexperienced. And um, and it was tough because we didn't have the right equipment and we didn't have the right knowledge and training to uh, make it through, really. I think in the end, there was some luck in there. Um, and we had it on the beach. Um, we had a lifeguard that really helped me because he was the one that understood that they had to turn me to the right side for the vomit to start happening. Mm -hmm. um, he helped me on the resuscitation. He did all the CPR procedures. And we had a person on the cliff with the radio, which came down running and, and, and got the ambulance to come as fast as possible. Right. Can you explain what your recovery was like from that? Ooh. <laughs> it was a four year recovery. <laughs> yeah. Explain what I, um, happened to your body after that. And why yeah, yeah. At first I broke my, I broke my leg on that episode. So I broke my fibula. Wow. I went to the hospital and I had pneumonia which is normal, you know, after you, you drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. but I was released from intensive care in 24 hours, which was very optimistic, but I had a back injury my whole life at that point, since I was 18 mm -hmm. and, and that accident, it really worsened. And I believe not even a year later, I started the complications of doing spine surgeries. And then I had to do three of them to get to where I am today. Wow. And how are you feeling today? I feel great. I feel great. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm the healthiest person in the world. You know, I've put my body through a lot of abuse. But I mean, would you say that you after four years or whatever that you that you I made a full again. recovery? Oh, yeah, I peaked again. I peaked again. And, yeah. and I think that was that was um, I needed to, you know, in order to break world records and to surf at that level, I would only be able to get there if I was much, much better than before, you know? So I did not only get healthy, but I became a much better athlete. Can you explain that, like getting over the fear of what happened? Because most people, whether they fall off a horse or go through something like you would just be like, I'm not doing this anymore. This is too scary. I could lose my life. And then the fear from actually what happened would prevent them from ever doing it again. You end up going back to the exact same spot and winning a world record there, right? Yeah. How well, did you even do that? Yeah, it was complicated. It was not easy, you know, but it was clear to me that that was the next frontier for my sport. I knew that every world record from, from that moment on would be broken on that place. So it was not like I had an option and yeah. I dreamt about having a world record my whole life. And so it was about deciding whether my dream was worth risking my life again. Mm. And I think... Everyone that doubted me and the really harsh criticism that I was offered um, on that moment really helped me in a way because I was so scared to go back. Mm -hmm. And people were telling me consistently that I should never go back, that I had to really, really dive inside. And that was lucky because I was laying on my back for many, many months of those four years. Yeah. So I had to make a decision, you know, do I want to risk my life again to achieve my dream mm -hmm. and you know the answer became yes and that's why I did what I did but you know I had to dig really deep I had PTSD I had you know a lot of physical issues mental issues and you know I worked through them but with the answer being clear you know that I did want to do it that I was the right person to do it